Okay, let's go live with James speaking, trainingsites.io. Uh, Notebook LM has a huge problem and it's Claude Code. And in fact, Claude Code all week for me has been absolutely crushing Notebook LM. In fact, I haven't even opened Notebook LM. That's how impressive Claude Cowork is. So what I wanna do is I wanna share why Notebook LM has a big problem. And I wanna go through a couple of the examples of how they're different and why you need to know about Claude Cowork. Uh, so, you know, when you think about what you've normally been doing in your education business is creating content, being able to streamline uh, some of the work that you do and hand it off in many cases to Claude, uh, sorry, uh, Google Notebook LM, where you could give it some resources or data, you could talk about or prompt and get information about that data, and then you had the option to generate some output. And that output was stunning. Uh, right now, when I record this, there's nine different styles of output, and they are absolutely awesome results that you can get from Notebook LM. Um, and I think that's part of the problem because when you go and you start playing with Notebook LM, you kind of realize that there's two kind of limiting factors to it. The first one is, is there's only nine outputs that you get, and those ones are predetermined by Google. We don't have any choice on that. The other thing is, is that you have to find the information that you want to give to Notebook LM. You have to upload it, and you have to attach it to a single notebook. So I know in my case, for example, if I take a look at my notebooks here, and we'll go back to the notebooks, and if I look on my screen, you know, I think there's, I don't know what the limit is right now, but I got notebooks all over the place. And many of those notebooks are all about adding a whole bunch of information. I'm limited to 300 files uh, of a certain size that are there. Uh, and then on the right, I've only got nine outputs, right? Like audio overviews, video overviews, mind maps, uh, FAQs, flashcards, quizzes, that kind of stuff. Very cool stunning stuff that's out there, but it's nine choices. Now, on the other hand, the difference between that and Claude Cowork now is this. And again, I'll put all the links for you here uh, so that you see them. This was the announcement uh, from uh, Claude Cowork just about the start. And this is kind of the, the difference uh, between it. So, um, so this was actually built on Claude Code, which is the interface that the programmers use to create applications and mini apps, do all that vibe coding stuff and do real hardcore technical stuff. Claude Cowork was built on it, but what they did is they basically allowed you, me and regular people to provide tasks that we want done and have Claude Cowork go and do the work. So this is the shift between Notebook LM where we're giving a prompt and Claude Cowork where we're giving a task. That's kind of the first thing that you'll notice. So we don't have to open up the terminal and we don't have to do one prompt at a time. We can give multiple tasks to Claude Cowork and we can give nested or process tasks and it will actually go and do it. So this is the difference between having one employee or multiple employees and having one employee that does one kind of thing really well and other employees that do other things really well. We're not limited, it's completely limited only by our imagination and the processes and the actual to-dos that we give uh, the, the uh, Claude Cowork. Uh, and then from the technical point, this is the only thing to kind of know about this. Here's the one right here that's special, direct local file access. So what this means for me and you is, I don't know, but for me personally, I have files and files and files on my Google Drive, uh, in my uh, local storage, um, in my desktop, uh, on my documents, my download folder, my Google Drives, there's just a lot of stuff with all sorts of different formats of content. But it's a brain dump. I got all of it that's there. Claude Cowork has direct local file access. What that means to me and you is, that we don't have to upload anything. We just have to say, hey, here is my hard drive or here's where I store my files that are important for this particular task or for this particular project. I can just say, here's all of the stuff. I'm not limited to the number or amount in there and I'm not limited to the type. It doesn't have to be a PDF. It doesn't have to be a text file. It has to be a file that it was in within that local storage. Um, and then also, 
Claude breaks down complex work into smaller tasks and coordinates parallel work streams to complete them. And this is a thing that I was talking about. We've got multiple co-workers with multiple skills out completing tasks. It's not us doing a prompt and getting a response. So those are kind of the cool things that are happening. The interface works like this. I'll show it to you again. I have a whole bunch of videos about this that we'll go over. Um, you'll notice on the left-hand side, it says new task. Claude, uh, regular Claude, chat, new chat, co-work, new task. So again, uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this in this video, but it is only available as they rolled this out on Monday. Right now, today, it's only available on the Mac desktop and for Macs users. And this obviously will change over the next couple of weeks as it filters down to the uh, less expensive ones uh, and uh, also to the other platforms. So I've been playing around all week with it, all sorts of cool stuff. And again, I've done this in the other videos, but the part that I want you to kind of get your head around is this. I am not limited to those nine outputs that we were talking about. I am limited by the tasks that I ask Claude Cowork to do. Completely different picture to look at. This is the first step, that tipping point to having digital employees, these agents that will go out and work on our behalf. And they use some examples here, and this is what I recommend you do. Get in here, play around, and just start thinking about, if I'm using Notebook LM to do something like create a quiz or a flashcard, I'm holding my breath, hoping that it understands what I want in the quizzes or the flashcards or the report. I'm hoping that it's gonna create something based on the documents that I gave it. But on the other hand, wouldn't it be a lot better if I just said, work in a folder, and I say, work in my courses folder, and it's gonna say, allow COD to change files in your courses, now, I gave some permission on this one. I'm just going to say allow it for this one. So it's working in my courses folder. I didn't have to upload anything to it. And in my case, I'm going to make a prototype. I'm going to make an app. I'm not limited to the Notebook LM quiz that it's creating, guessing on my content. I can let it know which content I have and make a prototype that demonstrates your idea. So in this particular case, maybe I'm going to go and create something interactive, like a quiz. Get my connected here before we building and go through, and it's just helping him out a little bit there. So I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to start it while we're waiting. It's basically going to go, and it is going to create an interactive app for me. So I didn't guess or have to wait for Google to come up with something, which is cool, but I'm telling it what it is that I want and it will actually go and build the app for us and ask some questions. And the cool thing with this, of course, is that it does interact with you to clarify things. It does have the ability to create a to-do list or a process that it's gonna go through. And it asks for your permission, asks you to clarify things. You can go do that. Some of the other ones for uh, just an example that the ones here, just while we're talking, as it tests on a specific topic, personality assessment quiz, I can just say and, you know, uh, base it on um, and again, I'm just giving a bad example based on my courses uh, and then uh, actually we'll do uh, and a lead generation Uh, quiz. Okay, so I could have done click these kind of thing, gone through, fun and comfortable, result page and scoring, and I'm going to go and submit. So we'll let that go work in the background. The point that I'm making here is that we are now in control without having to do coding, but we can create apps, anything that we want about the content that we already have locally. Now we can still search, we can still use scripts, this is a completely interactive coding agent that works on our behalf. You're not limited to those nine choices that you have with Notebook LM. And I like to think of it this way. It's Friday night when I'm recording this. Friday night, usually go out, have some fun, go to the local pub or the restaurant, have a nice meal out, reflect on the week. Now, 
I don't know about you, but there's a couple pubs where I live. We end up going to the same pub, usually one of a couple, and we usually have the same order that we're comfortable with because we know exactly what we're getting. We know exactly how it's going to be prepared. We know exactly how the bar or the pub is going to look like. But we're picking from a couple items that are on that particular menu. That's Notebook LM. It's that trusty pub that we can go to. Now, on the other hand, Claude Cowork just came along, and this is completely different than that pub. We're not comparing a pub to pub or a restaurant to restaurant because now I have a chef that's going to come directly to my house and it will cook whatever I want the way that I want, and it has access to all of the different ingredients it needs for whatever meal that you're asking. And the ops, the thing that, you know, that uh, excites me personally is that I don't have to pick one meal at a time. For Notebook LM, I have to pick one, wait for it, pick two, wait for it, and so on. If I'm using Claude Cowork, I can just say I want all of these meals. I want them all prepared like this. Go do your work, and I'm going to come back when the meals are ready. And I can have them served to me at the exact same time. I don't have to wait. This is an agentic shift, and it's gigantic for anyone who's in the education space and specifically in content creation. Our ability to interface with people in the way that is personalized to them has taken a massive leap forward, and it is Claude Cowork. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel, but more importantly, go to trainingsites.io. Join my privately branded campus, my community, where I share all of my content and help people just like you start, build, and grow an education business. And just remember, if you're serious about surviving in the world of AI over the next 340 days, I think, that are left, these agents are the ones that are really going to make the biggest change in not only your life, but the people we're teaching and the people that we're selling our courses and educational content to. And if you want to stay ahead of it, you're going to have to have your own privately branded campus. So join there. Hope to see you inside. Take care and expect the best.